to start creating your avatar in Ready Player Me, first navigate to readyplayer.me slash vrchat, then create your avatar. It's actually loading up my avatar here since I've already kind of crafted it, but essentially you can customize your avatar's appearance, general clothing, change things like skin color or hair color, depending on what sort of uh, needs you want your character to look like. And then once your character is looking close to what you want for your actual avatar, hit next. Ready Player Me will create, will prepare your avatar and turn it into an FBX that we can import into a Unity project that has Flipside Creator Tools loaded in it. Okay. Once your avatar has been created, it'll generate a thumbnail. And most importantly, to download your avatar, you'll copy this link here, paste it into your browser, and you'll direct download an FBX. It's usually a good idea to rename the FBX to something that's a little bit more recognizable. So rpm.me, and I already have my Flipside project open that has my creator tools already imported into it, which you can find here, as well as the top menu there. And I have a folder specifically where I want to import that character into Assets RPM, RPM Tutorial. So I'm just going to click drag that FBX here, like so. And it'll just take a moment to load. Normal map settings, I'll fix that. Always a good idea to fix your normal map. And uh, here is my project tab, and there's the uh, FBX that I've imported. And the cool thing is Unity will actually recognize the file type and generate a bunch of secondary information that it can use to build assets for you in a project. Um, and by that I mean like it finds the model, the skeleton, aka the rig, any imported animations, although for this character I don't want any imported animations. And it will also recognize your materials. Although Flipside automatically extracts textures and materials during the uh, import process, so generally I'll leave that. Uh, the thing I really care about to get my character set up though is the animation type under the rig tab. Uh, and what I need to do is turn that from generic to humanoid. And that's what allows me, let me just hit apply right there, to uh, control the character as an avatar inside of Flipside. And uh, generally, you could probably just take the character directly um, into the creator tools after this to animate with, but it doesn't hurt to check your skeleton by hitting configure. There we go. So as you can see, my character is in a proper T pose, which is what you want. Like space seems good. Mo map seems relatively good. Let's check the eyes like that. And uh, a few things you can do during the skeleton definition phase, which is uh, basically what you do is you plug in different bones into these different dialog points. And that's how we remap any skeleton to uh, any configuration so that you can bring your uh, any type of avatar into Flipside. But um, the things that we need, and let me check the hierarchy here, is that we need the hips, spine, spine one, uh, we don't necessarily need spine 2. In fact, I find uh, it can kind of get in the way of some actions, so I'll usually remove that. And uh, to keep the upper body a little bit stiffer, I'll take out the left and the right shoulder. But, uh, oh, and also the left and right eye bones. We actually control those inside of Flipside, so we don't need to define those. And I'm just hitting the delete key when I'm picking them. You can also hit the tab and choose none if you want to clear those. Okay, but uh, of course I need my head bone, so to actually like change the different configurations for the body in case uh, a skeleton bone doesn't get mapped correctly or something like that, you can actually just click and drag to the correct dialog box. So sometimes you'll get like bones that aren't being assigned properly or it'll grab like the wrong finger or something like that. So sometimes, like in the example of the finger, I'll need to hit the delete key and clear those out and then just click, click drag all the bones that I want into the right configuration. So for the thumb, index finger, middle finger, so on and so forth. So we'll say that my character is essentially ready.
So then I hit apply, like so. Check general deformations after this by hitting the muscles set, muscle settings, like so. That, check my hands, check those. Okay, so I may need to adjust the thumb a little bit. In which case I want something maybe a little more relaxed, like that. Hit apply. Muscle settings. Check the hand. That's looking a lot better. Go back to mapping. Do the same thing on the other hand. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Call that done. So I have my avatar definition ready. So now I'll open my creator tools, like so. And it'll open as a tab I can actually dock in my Unity project. Creator tools, it'll tell you the version. And uh, then with the FBX selected, I can actually import my character automatically. Or I can go under Flipside Creator Tools and create character from select selected model. Going to do that. Fix my normal map one more time. And as you can see, all the textures are wired up. And the character is looking really good. Uh, you also have the option during the import process to set your collider level between full, medium, and minimal. Um, if you're targeting quest or lower platforms, it's recommended uh, to keep that to a none. But on higher end platforms, you can add a lot of really cool functionality because what Flipside will do with these colliders that are generated is it'll actually use those for interactions. So if your character brushes the hand on a table, the hand won't go through the table. Or if you want to knock over a bottle or something like that, uh, you would add your colliders at this stage and then all those actions will happen inside of our app. For now though, I'm going to set that to none, hit import. And for the most part, my character is essentially ready. So I'm going to save my scene. But uh, of course, there's still a couple extra steps that I have to go through. Um, and the, the key thing I want to point to is this avatar model references script. And this is where uh, Flipside, along with an animator, uh, essentially controls uh, all the custom settings for your character. So for instance, the character's name can be assigned here. So I'll just call it me for now, attribution, wolf 3D. Uh, if you have a thumbnail already created, you can put it here. And uh, something really important is the center eye, which is, this is essentially where your headset sits in relation to a character. And you can actually adjust how a character is articulated by positioning that. But generally when I'm testing things out, I'll position them at eye level like so. And if uh, you need to adjust later on, like maybe where my headset is in relation to the head of the character, maybe it's a bit too forward or too little back, this, this can be really easily adjusted. Turn on my lighting here. Looks a little bit better. That normal map's working really well. So I've got my center and eye in place. Uh, my character actually has two bones that Flipside has found that control the eyes. If I actually select those bones, zoom in, rotate those. That looks awesome, but also a little creepy. So left and right eye bones. I do want to look at targets. Okay, and we're very close. So at this point, now I want to look at controlling the face and uh, getting my facial animations ready. Um, and the way to do that is to use the blend shapes Wolf 3D generates when you create your character. Uh, to figure out what objects uh, that you've imported have blend shapes, if they have any at all, uh, first check to see under your import settings if you're importing your blend shapes, and then you can move through your hierarchy in your project until you find a skin mesh renderer, like so, on one of your objects. At this point, this is like the whole body. And there's actually this little tab here that says blend shapes. I can click that, and as you can see, there's this long list of objects. And what these are, are deformers, like so. And as you can see, there's actually some problems with the blend shapes as they're imported. 
that I can adjust on the FB axis I brought in, but I can control different facial animations with each individual blend shape to create movement on a character's face. And this is actually how I control emotions, mouth movement, um, as well as like any other additional effects as far as shaping the face depending on the context. Uh, but of course we don't want the whole body to kind of change that way. It's actually a relatively simple fix. All I need to do is change my import settings. Uh, and the two ways you can do this is either by hitting legacy blend shape normals, like so. Do -do. As you can see, we don't get any more of that popping. Uh, and the other way to do it that's uh, technically more correct is to actually set your blend shape normals to import and then your smoothness source from smoothing groups. And then just hit that. So, and again, it essentially achieves the same thing. I believe it's a little bit more performant to use the uh, the correct method, though. So I recommend using the smoothing source and uh, using the uh, normals of the blend shapes when you import them. So this character is no longer deforming weird. So now I want to actually wire it up so Flipside will recognize which blend shapes I want to use for expressions as well as uh, visemes slash mouth shapes for the most part. So to do that, I have to assign the animator, or in this case, it's already been plugged in uh, at the top level. So if you actually click that animator here, it's on that object, it's up here. And then I want to make sure I'm targeting the right mesh or additional meshes. To do that, it's under the mesh dialog. Find meshes with blend shapes is also a button. You can just hit, Flipside will automatically search through. But uh, whatever objects plugged into uh, this dialog is the one that uh, Flipside's going to control the blend shapes on. But um, okay, so we have the object that we want to control because we know this all has blend shapes. Um, we have the animator set up properly, so now I can go about assigning my blend shapes. And to do that, all you have to do is hit add blend shape and then scroll through the list of available blend shapes on that object. So for instance, mouth smile, like so. I can preview that by hitting this eye icon here. And um, the cool thing about Flipside is I can assign multiple blend shapes to different expression types to create more complex expressions. Maybe mouse, pre mouse press left, like so, create kind of a cockier sort of smirk. Really like that. And yeah, as far as setting up the character, I'm just moving through each expression adding the uh, the blend shapes that I want. So I'm closed. It should be like a frown or something like that. Mouth frown left. And I think I saw a mouth frown right. So, oh yeah, see, there you go. And I'm just moving down the list of shapes to craft the different, um, different emotions. Then of course my blinks, which is usually it's called eyes closed or something like that. Maybe each eye is individually rigged up, so I'll use both of those. And I can also control how far that blend shape is pushed. So maybe I want my eyes to be a little bit more closed by default, like that, very powerful. And then of course I have my individual visemes. So basically there should be several blend shapes for your mouth being open. I believe there's an ah shape here, here it is. So essentially like, if you know anything about cartooning, you're familiar with this concept, but your mouth makes shapes uh, as you're uh, making sounds. And you can find like visual guides online for like which shapes work well, or you can just literally like say the um, the sound that you uh, that you want, like ah, e, i, o, f, and just paying attention to the mouth shapes you make. And from that, you can pick through the blend shapes that are available on a character and craft essentially how that character is going to talk because what Flipside does is it takes these different blend shapes that are applied and depending on the sounds that are coming in through your mic will automatically blend between those different shapes to create the illusion of your character speaking. Um, and yeah, like once these are all wired up, your character will uh, talk along with uh, your voice as you're speaking through them. Of course, this um, because of the number of blend shapes that can take some time. It's usually pretty complicated. So uh, I won't be going fully in depth. I already have a fully built out version of this character uh, with all the blend shapes wired up, if you'd like to have a look at that. But um, 
you're also not limited to just uh, expression type blend shapes when it comes to making your character talk. Maybe, for instance, you have a Muppet style character that um, that you just want the mouth to flap open and close, and that's good enough for your purposes. Uh, in which case, I recommend using the simplified blend shapes approach. And uh, what that'll allow you to do is actually either define a jawbone for your character to move your mouth open and closed, or you can assign a single blend shape for all of your mouth uh, movement effects. And as your character's talking, it'll just blend open and close depending on the audio that's coming in. And otherwise, you can wire up your expressions and your blinks just like normal. And uh, you'll be able to uh, use that inside of Flipside without having to wire up all the complex uh, mouth movements on your character. Again, though, the character will look more simple. If you want like a more realistic representation of how a person talks, you'll use the full blend shape suite. And uh, if you want something more stylish or cartoony, you'll probably use blend shape simplified. Uh, so we'll say blend shape simplified works pretty well. Uh, after that, we have just our avatar bent bent elbow parameter. This controls kind of how far your character can reach and like how bent the arms are. Usually, I'll start with a value of 0 0.01 for most of my characters so that uh, I don't get any elbow popping, but I still have the full reach of the character. You can modify that by tweaking those settings. Uh, and the final thing is your wrist settings for your character. And essentially there's a concept of wrist twist bones. Um, Wolf 3D avatars by default don't have wrist twist bones, so this is something you'll ignore. But um, essentially you'll have a secondary bone that sits in the middle of your forearm that helps compensate for uh, wrist deformations. Um, between like the uh, your wrist and your forearm, you'll kind of use those to compensate uh, an effect that sometimes happens called pinching. Um, but that's going to be like a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, and unfortunately, there aren't any wristless bones on Wolf 3D avatars at this time. But uh, essentially, that's the last really important setting to look at. Um, we'll say that uh, this character is essentially done at this point, in which case I'll save. Go to my Flipside Creator Tools here, and then Build and Publish Character or Build Character Bundle. Now that we've published our character to Flipside, we can navigate to the website by going to our browser of choice and going flipsidexr.com, then logging in, or in this case, going to my uh, personal account name, then under Characters, and I can see all the characters that I have loaded in my palette. And as you can see here, there's the me character. So that, uh, that character is loaded into my custom characters inside of Flipside, and I can use them in a production. As you can see, here I am in Flipside, doing various expressions and movements, and ready to make content.